A high percentage of police officers in Nigeria are confronted with psychological illness and injuries as a result of occupational stress, which is compounded by a lack of attention to police officer welfare by government, insufficient annual leave, and poor salaries that contribute to poor performance. One of the good things about the NSAS protest is that it brings to the fore the concerns about the mental and physical welfare of Nigerian police officers. And joining us live to share his thoughts on this is uh, Taiwo Akinlami, a legal practitioner. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Akinlami. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure to be with you this morning. All right, I'm going to start, you know, with asking why, you know, th this part of the conversation seems to be greatly ignored um, over time. A lot of people don't get to, you know, look deeply into the health, uh, mental and physical um, health care of uh, Nigerian police officers. Um, and why is that? Well, um, I think the first thing we need to understand is that... Um, in a developing nation like ours, that is uh, the Nigerian state is a developing nation. And what you find is that there's a lot of things that are left unattended to when it comes to human capacity development, human capacity development, mental development, uh, the respect for the rights of the people. So uh, a lot of things are ignored uh, all over the place. So that's why you find that in more developed climates, now, issues that has to do with mental health of the people are not as prioritized as it comes to physical health and all the other areas of total well-being. But the situation is abysmally uh, condemnable and uh, apprehensible in a country like Nigeria, where we have no respect, but to a very large extent, for dignity of human person. That is the issue. When you have respect for dignity of human person, you are going to care about the total well-being of the people. But once you don't have respect for dignity of human person, I asked the question recently, or a few years ago, I began to ask the question, what is the worth of the, of a, of the life of a Nigerian? What is the worth of life in Nigeria? So the reason why you find those, this kind of conversation in the back burner is because we do not recognize that a human being needs to be total to perform optimally. If a human being is not, if a human being is not totally, you know, the needs of a human being is not totally addressed, what is going to happen is that the human being cannot perform optimally. And once a human being is not performing optimally, what that means is that the human being is malfunctioning. And that is what we are dealing with when it comes to generally uh, as Nigerians today and when it comes to the Nigerian police force. Right. I mean, uh, Mr. Hakim, I mean, the conversation around mental health is such that we can never stop it. Uh, and the focus being on the policemen. I'm wondering, at what point in their training should they get all of these um, recommendations that you're making, you know, for them to understand what their role is, how they deal with trauma, how they deal with issues that they come across on a daily, whether standing on the road or attending to the public generally. At what point do they get that orientation in their training? Okay, let me start by saying that these men are supposed to enforce the law. We call them law enforcement agents. If they are law enforcement agents, they must be the first beneficiaries of those laws that they are expected to enforce. They must benefit from that law. And under the Nigerian law and international treaties, mental health has been recognized as fundamental human rights. When you look at the chapter two of the Nigerian constitution, when you look at which protect the rights of the people uh, to health, when you look at the, the, the African charter on, on human rights, African charter on human and people's rights, when you look at the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, when you look at the national health insurance scheme, now it has been concluded that everyone has a right to the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health, which includes access to all mental services, sanitation, adequate food, decent housing, healthy working condition, and clean environment. That is the position of the law. If that is the position of the law, how come those who are supposed to enforce the law do not enjoy this benefit? 
And when you look at the way policemen are treated, when you look at their condition of work, that so the, 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 that when someone joins the police office, the police force in Nigeria, the salary is as low as 10,000 naira or thereabouts. So the truth of the matter is that from the inception, they are police officers are human beings. They have blood flowing in their veins. They are supposed to enforce the law, but they are not entitled to the provisions of the law that we cater for their own well-being to put them in a position where they are able to do their job that we are calling for trouble. And that is what we have seen. Okay, I, I, you know, I, for a very long time. Now. Ms. Akilami, I, I want to know if, if this is in any way wishful thinking, um, um, asking for uh, better mental health uh, checks for Nigerian uh, police officers. Um, and why I'm describing it that way is because we are at a stage where, um, yes, I would say one of the benefits of the NSARS protest mm -hmm. is the fact that we've gotten into this conversation now. Right. But we are at a stage where we've also gotten to realize that police officers, um, a few times, I, I believe, I'm not sure how much, also have to buy their own uniforms. They don't have funding for a lot of things. They don't have funding for their patrol vehicles. They don't have funding for, you know, the things, that, the services they are meant to render, um, even if there is an annual budget yeah. every year for the police. So if we are going as far as asking to now start having psychological evaluation and having, you know, better um, foundation, you know, as a police officer. Is that, is that really wishful thinking? Um, or is that something that is achievable in any way in the, in the current Nigerian state? Well, it will, it will remain wishful thinking if we are ready to live with the kind of police force we have right now. I hope you know that the crisis of SARS is the crisis of the Nigerian police. The foundation, the men that constitute SARS operatives are men of the Nigerian police. Someone says power corrupt, absolute power corrupt, absolute. absolutely. But someone says no, power, absolute power does not corrupt. Absolute power only reveals who you are. What we are dealing with is a group of people who have been given absolute power without training, without welfare. So they are men of the Nigerian police force. I hope it is important to note that well before SARS came on the scene, the Nigerian police have not been friendly in their disposition to the people. So if we are comfortable with the extrajudicial killing, if we are comfortable with, with, with bribery and corruption that are the Nigerian police, if we are comfortable with the fact that police always have arrived on the, on the scene after the criminal elements have disappeared from the scene, if we are comfortable with what happened on the, on, on the 21st of October, a day after the shooting in Lekki, which led to the vandalization of public and private property, then it will be, we will continue to say it's a tall order, it's a pipe dream. But if we are tired of the kind of insecurity, please note, the concern says the welfare and the security of the people shall be the primary aim of government. If we are interested in holding government accountable to what is written in the books, not anything extra, then we must know that talking about the mental health of the police officers, of the police force, mental evaluation or re-evaluation, psychological support and all of that, we must know that it is a prerequisite going forward. It's something we must look at. And, and let me be cite to you Section 17, Subsection 3 of the Nigerian Constitution. Now, this, now, Subsection C states, and I quote, the health, safety and welfare of all persons in employment and safeguard, are safeguarded and not endangered or abused. Dean went for that to say there are adequate medical and health facilities for all persons. Now, now this law, section 17, subsection 3, subsection C of the Constitution is saying that when a person is in employment, now we're talking about now the Nigerian police officers are in the employment of the Nigerian government, and the Nigerian government must lead by example. They must live by example. If they are saying employers of labor must pay attention to the health and safety well-being of their people, then they, as the employers of labor of the police, must lead by example. That's what the Constitution says. And when you look at mental health, as I said to you before, it in, when, when, when we look at health, it includes mental health. Globally, mental health has been accepted as fundamental human rights of people. Because there's no way you can function 
without that. Now, if you look at Article 12 of the International Covenant on Economic and Cultural Rights, the law, the, that convention to which Nigeria is a signatory says the state parties to the present covenant recognize the right of everyone to the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health. That is the standard. That is not see, it's a good thing that your organization is bringing this conversation to the core. And we need to put the frontiers of this conversation. When we are asking the government to pay attention to the mental health of the police, we are not asking for too much. We are not asking for what is not in the books. We are not asking for extra. We are asking for what is normal, what is supposed to be normal, what is extra. If we are going to get the right police, if we are going to get the police that can truly be our, our friend, we must train a police, we must support a police that is a friend to itself. Thank you for your thoughts, Mr. Akinlawi. Yeah. Just before we let you go, I hear what you mean, you know, talking about reforming yeah. the police, especially in terms of their training and orientation. And, you know, you mentioned what I was just about to say, which is police is your friend. Every time I think of that motto, police is your friend, I think it's, you know, they're supposed to discharge their duties from Absolutely. a place of compassion and empathy. Now, where did we get it all wrong? And moving forward, how do we remedy this? Do we still have a chance to remedy the situation, even for future you know, police I officers? I think going forward, going forward, number one, when we talk about mental health in Nigeria, I speak from the perspective of a lawyer. You know that in 1916, the lunacy ordinance was passed. Then it became a law in 1958. The last time we promulgated any law on mental health in Nigeria was 2003. No, no, no. The last time a bill was presented before the National Assembly, on mental, the mental health bill was 20, 2003. And for many years, nothing was done. It was presented again in 2013, and nothing has been done to today. So the law, when it comes to mental health, is not updated. We need to agitate for that. Number two, we need to tell the government to be true to the letters of the Constitution. We need to tell the government to be true to the letters of international treaty that we have signed. We need to understand that it is the fundamental human rights of every Nigerian and a police officer to have good, to be treated well, because it is the treatment we met out to the police that affect their mental health. When a recruit is any less than 10,000 by the present regime of salary, by the present salary regime of the police, it, it, it is something that is very disheartening. You give this kind of man a gun, you give this kind of a woman a gun, a hungry man with a gun is going to wreck a gun. So we need to, so in, my, in conclusion, what I would advise that we do, one, we need to recognize that the law, when it comes to mental health and is, is, is backwards. Number two, we need to recognize that that it is a fundamental human right according to the treaties that Nigeria has signed. Three, we need to understand that Nigeria government as employers of labor has a, must have a commitment to treat their staff according to the letters of the constitution, setting an example for every employer, of, every other employer of labor in Nigeria. Number three, we need to have the political will to do the needful. Lastly, we need to continue to protest, we need to continue to agitate and be it peacefully, 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 online, offline, whenever the situation demands to continue to press the Nigerian government ultimately for the restructuring of Nigeria. Because at the end of the day, until this country is restructured, understand the reason why we came together in 1914, understand the reason why we got an independent in 1960, understand why we became a republic in 1963, understand why the first republic failed, the second republic failed, and we're now in the first republic. Understand why some people are calling for Biafra, why some people are calling for Arewa, why some people are calling for the Dua. Understand all of that. Come together on the table. Ask for people's grievances. Stop prescribing organization. You prescribe okay. um, You prescribe Mr. Akin, me, Prescribing uh, is not working. We have to be interested in the state of the nation. Because the state of the nation is... In the, in the interest of time, Mr. Akin, let me, uh, we, we would have to um, end it there. Right. There's, there's so much. And of course, you can see the passion that he has uh, for that conversation. Um, thank you for joining us. So, something I, I would you know, also have loved to throw in you know, as a question was, um, or is rather, what can the police officers themselves do? do. 
because um, right. I, I watched, you know, Sheung Kuti uh, sometime last week, I believe, saying that he had no business in agitating for better police rights. You know, if they have a problem with it, they should agitate for mm -hmm. themselves. And ask for um, what And ask for, them. exactly. So, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we'd also, you know, like, because I know police officers generally may not be happy with the way that they are trained but and they just have not been able co to say. working conditions. You mm. know, so what can they do mm, about right. it? I think you are absolutely spot on. Uh, okay, we have him again. Thank you so very mm -hmm. much. We did in thank you in absence. Uh, thank you. Uh, we know that you have a lot to say, but we are grateful for uh, time. We have to move on. Thank you so very much, sir. Okay, thank you very much.